as you know, I'm very big on doing lots of ground exercises for connection, and I'll use whatever I have around. So in this series, I'm planning on just kind of showing exercises you can do between three buckets. So for today, we're doing backing. Uh, the goal for this is to improve the responsiveness, connection, and lateral movement for your horse. You'll notice here with Q, I'm just asking her to walk backward. I'm using as light a pressure as possible on the halter. You could do this in a rope halter or, or bridle, whatever works best for you. But you'll notice how I have to, there has to be lateral movement here. I do have a dressage whip in my hand as well, or it's there in case I need it. Uh, but I can't over, you know, get too much lateral movement or else we're going to swing too far around. But she also has to be light going backward. Um, the, if we don't have light aids, if I'm pushing her or she's resistant, that's going to uh, translate to under sow. Here, you know, we might, oh, we went too far, kind of have to swing back. It's a matter of really getting her in tune with which side of the body I'm on and how I am, uh, re how she's responding to me. So the goal is really to get her light, get her moving and thinking backward, which will ultimately help her under saddle. Always praise after they do something good, even if it was just an attempt. And then it's important to give them a little break for some forward movement since back backing is really tiring for them. So let's say it's a little hard to do the weaving in and out. So you can actually just practice this as just backing on a straight line and keeping them straight out in an open space. That can be actually more challenging than turning. You'll see here how she wants to swing from side to side. You can actually add some ground poles or use this, do this along the arena fence or the walls to, so you have guides there. But if you do get crooked like we just did there, you can go ahead and take some steps to go forward and then reset before you're going back again so that you're not getting them all frustrated and more uh, tangled than they already were. Another, um, another modification you can consider is to make it a little bit more delineated between each piece is to go straight back and then pair it with a turn on the haunches or turn on the forehand where basically you're just getting them to swing their haunches over, yield their haunches to one side or the other. We're gonna back, we're gonna pause at this moment and now I'm gonna ask for a new movement. The new movement is to kind of turn, pivot on the forehand, bringing the haunches around that way. Now we back. So we're backing again until we're between the next two buckets, and then we're pivoting again. So this is all broken down into individual movements rather than thinking of how the first time when we are really just kind of making a, a swervy line through everything like a slalom. We're going to back, we're going to pause again, and now I'm going to ask her to swing her haunches. Again, trying to keep that forehand planted so that she's truly yielding the haunches. Back, you'll notice there's fairly light pressure on the halter here. I mean, she's, she's got her head up a little bit, but I'm not having to put my whole body into it. And then praise again at the end of that. So again, just remember, always praise when they try and backing is really mentally tiring for them. Another modification is maybe it's too hard for you to do the pivot. Just go ahead and do the straight word, straight back and forward between the buckets. So it gives you a visual to kind of back them between something, walk them forward so they mentally get that break. This might be for a horse that's a little more challenging. To, to, they might get a little more stuck going backward. And then now you'll notice I'm going to the whip here. I'm trying to get away from using the halter. I'm trying to get her more in tune with just kind of respecting my space and backing that way. So that can, I'm just t tapping the cannon bone uh, in between each one. If you really want to up the difficulty, you'll notice here I've actually dropped the lead rope as wrapped around her neck. Um, and it's loosely there and easy for me to grab quickly. But I have the dressage whip in my hand to kind of help aid along. But you'll notice both my hands are free and they're not on her. Every now and then I might have to touch her with a finger. But we're backing through this entire pattern with her pretty much at liberty, uh, which just shows the lightness there and, and the respect that she can have. And now we'll actually need to pivot the whole way around. This is my hand is out with the whip. As we swing around here, I have to kind of keep moving so I don't lose her too much, but we get her there. And then I have to, she has to obviously know how to hoe first. We're gonna back up and we're gonna pivot those haunches again, just by me stepping out and asking her. And this is great because it just shows how responsive and connected we can be. It's a great exercise to try.